Hello. Hello and good evening, everyone. Random stream out of nowhere, Michael Thacker. Yeah, I'm um, going to explain kind of what's going on here in just a moment. Um, let some more folks across the world uh, get notified of this. Hopefully, again, this was not planned. This was not scheduled. You guys didn't know about this in advance. Uh, but thank you to Michael Thacker, Dragon Dancer, and Zach on YouTube for, first of all, uh, coming by and, and, and catching this live stream. I'm glad that the notifications worked and that you got that, that little uh, heads up that YouTube puts out here. But, um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is obviously, you know, a very impromptu thing. So the reason why, um, really real, actually real quick before I give you the reason why, um, wherever you're watching this, if you're watching this on Facebook, um, hail and hello to you. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and do a quick share, um, of this video, please. If you don't mind, if you have social media platforms of your, um, you know, of your own, your personal profiles, go ahead and give this video a quick share. Um, and you, you know, if you've got groups or anything that you want to share it to as well, um, because this is going to be this week's random heathen ramblings podcast episode. We're going to be taking, um, live comments that come through here, um, post them up on the screen. So, um, this is going to be an interesting change of pace for this week. Um, I'm going to explain why here uh, in just a minute. So, hail and welcome to you all. My name is Jesse. This is uh, a Random Heathen Ramblings live stream for the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, which I uh, religiously and regularly post content on every week, every Thursday mornings. If you guys have been following my my socials for any length of time, the the podcast has been aired airing on Thursday mornings. Um, for years now. This is season five. Um, give this video a like, share, do all the fun things, you know, just let the algorithm know that, you know, it needs to kick it out to some more people. Don't know exactly how long we'll be streaming for. Um, but so why am I doing this live stream today for this week's podcast? I know a lot of folks watch or listen to my podcast on Spotify and all the other audio platforms. Um, but the video version of the podcast is only for the um patreon supporters so if you're a patreon supporter i know michael is um and anyone else on facebook what's up amelia amelia was just a guest on last week's episode she is the gidia or the river pine kindred there in texarkana texas so hail and welcome to you amelia thanks for stopping by and watching um, but so why am I doing this right now on a Monday, um, or, you know, in, in, in video format, um, we're still going to get the audio, uh, for this out on the, uh, Spotify platforms and everything. So this will be the, the episode for this week. Um, but the reason why we're doing it live here right now is because the guest that I had scheduled to speak with today, um, I, I mean, I, we, we, we had it planned, um, you know, months ago for him to come on here. We've been in contact back and forth via email for weeks. I sent an email earlier last week um, just saying, hey, just making sure we're still on. Uh, even sent the thumbnail uh, for, the, for the podcast to them and, and asked, you know, hey, is this okay? They responded back with some feedback, some like spelling errors or whatever, right? Got that approved, said, all right, good. We'll see you Monday. Yep. We'll see you Monday. Sent another email uh, earlier this afternoon and said, Hey, here's your, here's your link to join. See you at X time, right? Um, X time comes around and I'm sitting here uh, with, you know, my thumbs up my rear um, kind of waiting, sent a couple of emails saying, Hey, I'm here ready when you are, uh, sat and waited for 30 minutes and nothing. Now, listen, I understand right how things go. Um, you, you know, life happens, things come up, you know, you can't always plan, uh, for things to happen when they do. Right. So I understand that there could have been a, occurrence of uh, you know something could have happened to have prevented 
my guest from coming on the show today. And I hope that it wasn't anything serious and I hope that it was something that required their attention, you know, elsewhere. Um, nothing serious, of course. I wouldn't want, you know, any ill or anything to come on anyone. But uh, it, it definitely is, um, you know, I, I, I plan my schedule around when my guests come up here, right? Um, what's up, Adam Cage? I hope you're having a great night. Hope you are too, buddy. Nice to see you here. Thank you for tuning in. Again, guys and gals out here, just uh, if you don't mind, please share this video uh, wherever you're watching from. Uh, get some more folks to come on here because this is the podcast episode for this week. We're going to be taking live chat comments, questions, things that you might have on your mind that you'd like for me to ramble on a bit about. Um, but yeah, you know, going back to the whole thing, um, you know, hopefully it, it's it's nothing serious. And I, and I like to think that whatever it is, is, is more important than coming on the podcast. But just to put it out here, you know, I plan my life and, and I, I schedule things around my life for guests that come on this show. And if much like when I do my once a month, you know, uh, virtual hangouts with my scald tier and above patrons on Patreon, much like that, if, if you're pledging your support at that level, then I am obligated to be there when I say I'm going to be there. And if you're a guest on the show and you've, um, you know, scheduled yourself to be on here, what's up, Chris Martino? Good evening and hail to you. Thank you for joining. If you're scheduled to be here, then you are then obligated to be on time. Um, and I get again, I gave like a 30 minute grace period and waited and sent a couple of emails to my to my guests this week. And I never heard anything. So, again, I, I have to assume that there was something of a more pressing nature to come up that, you know, they, they were not able to, um, you know, uh, respond back in an email. But it does it, it did present a challenge to me because it's not like, well, let's just do it tomorrow. Or Wednesday or whatever. I'm like, I got a life and I got things that um, happen. And right, and when I when I s schedule stuff with people, it, it's it's on a specific day that works for me, works for them, and you know, that's up. That that that's all I gotta say. So what's up, John Deason? Good evening, man. Hope all is well. Hate to hear that it was a cancel. Uh, I'm not canceling it like indefinitely. I just you know want to put that out here. Um, again, not 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 to bear any ill will towards anyone without knowing the full context of things um I, I i got the i got the impression that that this guest was very excited to come on the show this week um because people are so excited to come on the show however i i do have a very long uh you know uh, I'm, I'm booked out into april into the middle of april now um so it, it, you know i'm like I want you to be here, right? I want you to come on the show. Um, I just, I can't sit here all night, you know, with my thumbs up my butt, um, waiting and, and not knowing if you're going to come here. So I need to make good use of the time that I have. And I thought, well, I don't have any other guests that I can just impromptu, you know, you know, an impromptu, like, hey, you want to come on and, and talk about whatever and not have anything really planned for. So I thought, well, what's the best use of my time? Let's put some feelers out here into the interwebs, um, go live. For a little while and see what folks have to say on this random Monday evening um, across two, three platforms. Well, across two platforms and, uh, you know, a few different profiles here. We've got uh, about 14 people watching live. Um, hail, uh, hail and hello to their uh, Jason. Um, what does it say? The baby heathen is here. Well, hail and hello to you, Jason. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, as a reminder or as a kind of a recap, um, the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast for this week that usually airs on, on Thursday mornings across Spotify and, and all the other audio platforms, um, this is what the podcast will be, right? So it's going to sound very, very rambly, <laughs> um, much like a live stream tends to be. So for those folks that usually don't get a chance to see the video format of the podcast because it's on Patreon now, um, you got to become a patron on Patreon, which, you know, by the way, um, if you do become a patron on Patreon, uh, you can follow me there for free. Uh, but if you want to watch the video versions of the show, you, you need to pledge just a dollar. OK, and the dollar gets you access to current videos that have been posted and all of my all of my uh, you know video content in the podcast forms. So 
if you don't want to, you know, continue that every month, one dollar a month is all it takes. Um, that if you want to just, you know, pledge your dollar, get your access, watch a bunch of videos, and then not continue anymore, that's totally fine. Um, but a dollar a month is all it takes for you to keep uh, access to be able to see the videos that uh, versions of the podcast. Okay. Normally every week they are aired on Spotify and everywhere else in audio format only. This will be aired on Spotify and everything uh, in its audio format. Um, so for those that are listening, when this comes out on Thursday this week, you know, it'll be like, well, who's, who's he talking to? Well, this is a live stream. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. So if you want to watch the recap of everything, um, you can either go to the Midgard Musings YouTube channel because it'll be up there. Um, or you can watch it on Patreon. Uh, will there be live streams? Uh, will this be live streamed, uh, saved on YouTube? Yeah, Michael. Um, I don't take down the live streams, you know, um, when they go up. So, like I said, this one will be kept on the channel for indefinitely, right? I'm not going to just take it down after after tonight's broadcast. Um, Adam says, if you ever want to do a podcast about the coming of age ritual we did at Shadowmoot last year, let me know what you want to know, and we will get it done. Adam, that is a that is a great um, offer for you. I mean, I, I never would have thought to have asked you for that because being a part of it at Shadowmoot last year was uh, was something very special. Um, but if you ever want to, if you want to you know, talk about it. Um, again, like I said, I'm booked out into April. Um, so you can shoot me an email. The uh, email address is uh, midgardmusingstn at gmail.com. I'd like to keep everything podcast related to email rather than private messages on, you know, the various social platforms that I'm on. It's just easier for me to keep track of, of things. I can put it on my calendar. I have a paper trail, as it were, to go back on. Um, but yeah, I would love to, if you're comfortable with um, talking about it, we can we can rap about, you know, what we go over, what we talk about, what we don't talk about, et cetera, things like that. Um, so yeah, I would definitely love to recap that with you, sir. Thank you. Hello, Leon uh, has a question. He says, what does it mean when a rune appears in a dream? Great question. Um. So for me, I've had uh, I've had some experiences, you know, um, in my practices over the years where runes have appeared in dreams to me in different contexts, um, or they've appeared in a sort of like not necessarily a dream state, but I was definitely like asleep, and then I was woken from my sleep, uh, and and runes or a rune was was present okay so i always like to take the context of the dream or, or 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 what was happening what was going on in the dream if you can talk with somebody who is a dream interpreter or has the the skill set to kind of do a deep dive into the dream itself i would definitely suggest going down that road too because dreams can mean different things you know and they can having an outside perspective, having a, you know, kind of like a third party perspective on things can maybe shed some light on, on the dream uh, for you that, you know, you, you may have overlooked or, or again, gives it a different perspective. Um, and I'm talking down to like some of the, and, and every dream, uh, per, you know, every, every dream that's interpreted, you know, I'm sure if you were to get um, several people who that is their area of expertise, uh, if you were to give, you know, a, a group of those type of people, the same dream to interpret, you might get some uh, similar, you know, re responses, similar things that they, that they kind of deduce. Um, and you'll also probably get individual things or feedback from those dream interpreters that um, are unique to, to, to what that to that person sees. Um, so, like for example, I, I did a podcast with uh, with a guy one time. His name is Benjamin Davidson, um, and on his YouTube channel, he is he's referred to as Benjamin the Dream Wizard Davidson. 
He's done several books. He's got a YouTube channel. Um, I've had him as a guest on my show before. We've he's had me as a guest on his, and I've given him a dream to interpret. You know, um, and one of which was uh, in, in, involved having a rune appear, and it was the Urus rune. So, uh, what does the rune mean, right? What is the meaning of the rune? And, and bear in mind, right, this guy is not a runer. He doesn't follow germanic heathenry he doesn't know anything about the runes he just interprets the dreams so he asks certain questions he tries to get as granular as possible and he will give you uh his his interpretation of the dream and it was really insightful to be given that information and to have his insight on it but you know what does the rune mean what was happening in the dream where were you were there any other people there right like, there's there's so many different things that can go into uh the dream itself that you would need to pick apart, I think, before you could answer the question of what does it mean when a rune appears in your dream? Um, so that's my answer to that. Um, sounds like a kick-ass episode, Aaron. Uh, Adam, yeah, John says that the talking about the, the coming-of-age ritual that I was a part of at Shadowmoot last year. What's up there, Voodoo Viking from Southeast Louisiana? Thank you for tuning in. Again, this is a live stream that will later on be appear, be this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. So it is very random, uh, true to its namesake, because we are taking live comments and questions, com you know, things from people. Uh, we got James Robinson. I was asked an interesting question by a guy who is just getting into Norse paganism, and I wasn't sure how to answer. He wanted to know how Jormungandr has relevance um, on a globe, as in does it just wrap the continents or something more complex? Uh, I think maybe the you know, you'd read the lore and, and, and hear what is he, how he's described in the lore. He, you know, the, the, he's the Midgard serpent and he encompasses Midgard. Um, Midgard not being, you know, flat or whatever, uh, obviously. So, you know, encompassing the, the, the world, I guess, I guess being a serpent, you know, you could, you could say that he probably is, um, definitely hugging certain areas closer, you know, dips and, and crevices and, uh, stuff like that. So if you, if you want to explore the 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 visuals of of what a serpent would be like um wrapping itself around a globe around a you know a sphere uh, you would have to picture the sphere being you know having depth right not not like a flat surface not like a like a basketball or something with no texture or depth to it i'm sure that as a serpent would uh wrap around you know say a rock that's that's more round than square or something i mean there's going to be parts of the serpent that are dipping into lower areas and higher peaks etc cetera, etc cetera. so we've got the heathen nerd here um you guys stay tuned for a, a, a guest spot with with this feller uh he's going to be coming on the podcast soon uh relatively soon so be be sure to subscribe to his channel um he says that um in an era where new heathens love to see signs everywhere, how do you decipher the mundane from the magic when interacting with the divine? That is a that is a great question, um, and I appreciate everyone coming here and asking questions to make this week's podcast such an interesting one. I'm going to try to get through them um, and give good answers as best I can, but also, you know. Uh, with with consideration of everyone's time, right? You're here. You have a question. You want it to be heard. Um, bear with me as I go through and 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 read the comments as we go. Um, but deciphering between you know uh, between what you would call like the mundane versus the magic. I like to also use a term. Um, well, I think mundane and and magic is is probably the best way uh, of, of describing this right here. But I've also looked at, you know, what is profane versus sacred. Um, the idea of 
what exists in the profane space and then what exists in sacred space. There are barriers, there are separations between the two, and not everything that you see the sign is, is, is a sign or an omen. The signs and the omens and stuff that are that are captured are, are meant for the individual that that is uh, receiving them, right? So like as an example, right, like not just uh, just because, you know, you've got, you know, a guy sitting by a river and, um, you know, he sees, um, you know, two ravens or, or, or two crows or something fly overhead, right? It doesn't mean that Odin is, is coming to him necessarily. Um, but there might have been something that this man or this person was doing by this river or in the forest or in the mountain or wherever he or she was or wherever this person was. Um, maybe they were doing something of a, of, a, of a ritual to connect with the divine, to connect with the sacred, and they were putting forth that magic. You know, they were, they were, they were executing the action to uh, hopefully get a, get a response from, from the sacred, from the divine, you know? And so when things like that are happening and you see this, you know, the ravens or, 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 or any other sort of like animistic response to things, I, you know, is it every single time? Probably not, but maybe in that context, it, it was a acknowledgement of sorts um, by the gods, right? It's hard to say, you know, we, we, I don't think we can def, I don't think we can put a definitive answer to that. But I think in terms of your question, how do we decipher the mundane from from the magic? I think a quick answer would be is, well, you know, what was what was happening? Are you just, you know, walking nearby and there happens to be, a, you know, a dead deer um, and, and there are, you know, corvids and stuff flying around and, and that's why they're they're present. That could be the, the simple mundane reason why they're there doesn't mean anything magical you know um so probably something worth going more into deep detail deeper detail with but that's my quick response hopefully it gave some good answer for you there uh voodoo viking says how much do you think uh the catholics uh how much do you think that the catholics too took i'm assuming you're saying took from the celts and the norse in regards to practice in uh, livelihood and religiously, religiosity. I've always made the joke that Catholics are pagans in denial. Because <laughs> if you've ever attended a Catholic mass, which I have, the, the methodology is very pagan, right? The, everything about the, the, the ritual of mass, uh, there, there's nuance to, uh, with that to, to you know, pagan rituals you know what i mean um i think that they took a lot because again when you look at the structure of their belief uh you know they, they're real big on saints of course there being a you know one supreme god and all that but they they ha they pray to saints and they have various saints for this thing that or the other to pray to that sounds eerily familiar to other polytheistic or even henotheistic beliefs where you have specific gods or goddesses to devote a prayer or, or an offering or something to for specific reasons. You know, you might pray to Freyr for fertility and, you know, you might bloat to Odin for victory in battle and all these various things, you know, so there's nuance to that. And I think, you know, how much they stole, you want to use the term stole, um, from Celts or or from Norse, from from again from from non-Christian belief systems, from the from the pagan beliefs of the, of of those areas, um, I think that there's a lot of nuance to all of that, and that there is uh, shared shared things. Um, so let me get over to the next. Thank you uh, for commenting that Voodoo Viking. Amelia, I'm just going through comments now, says that uh, normally when it comes to, to dreams, it is best to write the dream down and take your time to understand the meaning of the interpretation. Absolutely. You can definitely go through your own dream process and, and stuff, but if you're really wanting to explore some deep dive stuff, um, again, I, I've spoken multiple times with Benjamin Davidson. He is... Uh, 
he's got a he's got he's got a um a, a more like a, not not a religious approach or a spirit spiritual approach again he's not heathen or pagan or anything like that i believe he's last i checked anyways he was atheist or maybe even agnostic um i don't want to speak out of turn or incorrectly but he's he's unbiased when it comes to things so he, he he's giving a very you know uh, almost like psychological approach to things i believe he has background in psychology too so he is available he will put you uh yeah, you know, you can get in contact with him and, and, and he'll, if you want to, come on his podcast and, and talk through the dream and he'll uh, read, kind of interpret the dream for you there. But I, I agree with Amelia, you know, if you can record the dream yourself, document it down as much as you can remember, that's great. Hello there to uh, Devonshire Heathen. Good evening from the United, or good morning, sorry, from the United Kingdom. I know it is morning now. It's very early morning. So, Alan, good morning to you. Um, thank you for commenting. Uh, Jason says, I've had some runes in my dreams, but uh, the thing that is more concerning is this one dream that has occurred to me three times before I dreamt of what I perceived to be Ragnarok. That's a pretty common theme of dreams uh, when it comes to um, like recurring dreams like I, I i know people and i've had some of them myself uh where you it's very apocalyptical very doomsday you know end of the world destruction of the world that sort of thing um so i don't think they're very uncommon they're you know and, and, and being a pagan yourself being a heathen yourself uh, associating that sort of you know apocalyptical event with with ragnarok kind of tracks and makes sense what am i burning leon i'm burning um incense first of all i got a candle uh burning over here and then the incense that i'm burning is a uh uh it's a pine blend uh aroma so that's what you see kind of burning off to the side here um oh my my my, my pouch fell i'm wearing it i don't know i was you, you'll notice too if you, if you guys are used to watching my uh my content i've got these you know arm van braces and stuff on Def definitely not my normal aesthetic my wife had gotten me these um for 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 yule and, and the shirt that i'm wearing and she's like i want to do it like you know not like a photo shoot because like i want to see the whole ensemble on you like dress up for me kind of thing so i'm like all right cool and then because it was a podcast recording evening i'm like well i'll just i'll just keep it keep it normal hey we got scott shell uh sorry if you guy didn't show um <laughs> Jesse Lame. Well, we make the best of things, right, Scott? I guess uh, time being, uh, you know, precious for us all. I was trying to think of a way to give people something uh, valuable for this week. Um, and I thought, well, with you know, I don't know anybody right off the rip that I could reach out to and be like, hey, let's you know, shoot from the hip with this content this week. So we're doing a live stream and answering questions. So thanks for being here. Uh, was Michael saying that? Uh, so I've recently met another heathen at one of my job sites. What's the best way to see if they are someone worthy tying weird with making sure that they're not folkish? Um, I mean, ask, I mean, I, I think honesty and, and just, and just being, you know, blunt when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, if that's not your job, if that's not your thing, if you don't want to be around or, or, or tie your weird with anybody like that, um, just flat out ask, you know, say, Hey, you know, I, you know, I, first of all, a lot of people wear hammers and stuff, and they don't necessarily, uh, you know, they don't practice. They're they're, they're not practicing uh, heathens. You know, they wear it as a fashion statement sort of thing. If as long as you've established that they are heathens, that they are practicing heathens, maybe you've had conversations, talked with them about the gods um, or other similar topics that you can find, uh, you know, kind of common ground with. Uh, it might just it might just be the time at that moment to just flat out be like, hey, look, I, I you know, I'm not about folkish heathen stuff, and you know, um, all right, you know, what do you think about that? Um, I'm I'm especially I don't know for 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 me, you know, my age, um, I'm I I just want it up front, man. Like, just give it to me straight. Uh, let's not beat around the bush when it comes to stuff like this. And 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 if you know you're talking to people who could potentially, you know, waste your time because that's not the thing that you want to be involved in, then just better get it up, you know, straight up out of the way, I think. 
Um, Emilia says that in the mundane settings, the, the gods leave us messages. Magic is everywhere, but not everyone sees those signs in the everyday mundane. That's good. I like that. Magic is everywhere. You know, we live, we live in, in a magic goal realm. Uh, just, you know, you stop and think about things that are going on, seen and unseen. Um, it's pure magic. Raised in Southern Louisiana Catholicism, Voodoo Viking. With a name like Voodoo Viking, I, I could I could see the Voodoo part being, uh, you know, Southern Louisiana. Uh, <laughs> the, the the Catholic thing kind of is like one of those spicy little additions of life that I wouldn't have called out, but yeah. Uh, he the nerd has a question. Said, "What advice do you wish uh, someone give you when you were new to the path?" Ooh, wow. Ah, oh, man. Uh, I I think that's a great question. I don't I've actually never been asked that before. So, what advice would I? What did he say? What's the? What advice do I wish I would have gotten from someone when I was new to the path? Hmm. You know, I wish that I would was given more than just the Eddas as 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 a source of of knowledge to go to. You know, um, because that's lore, that's that that's mythology, and and um, yes, they're they're you know, there's great stuff in the Eddas that you know, like the Havamal, and and um, but but it's so much centralized around the stories and the myths. It it doesn't really cover anything to do with morals ethics worldviews of the teutonic people of germanic people of pre-christian europe you know um you got to think too when the eddas were written um it was during and after the viking or you know right around and during the viking age and so by that point in time you know the the native indigenous heathen beliefs and pagan beliefs had been all but wiped out and replaced with Christianity. So much of all of that stuff that is written in those sources were written by Christians. So you can't help but know that there's bias from the Christian side being imparted into those stories, right? So much of the stories that exist uh, in, in the lore, by the time they were written down, you know, it was several hundred years later than when people were actually actively, openly practicing things. So I think I wish that people would have kind of pointed me in a direction of good source, you know, good material to, to research, good learning material uh, to, to, to explore beyond the Eddas. Stuff to do with, you know, everyday life, the, the worldviews of, of, of these people, knowing the difference between uh, how the various tribes would have you know viewed the world because again you you know we, we hear like heathenry is this kind of umbrella term of well norse heathenry yeah norse meaning like scandinavian you know so you got your scandinavian model of heathenry you also got your 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 continental germanic uh approach to heathenry very um which 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 is where things kind of started in the south right you know saxony and um, everything that goes back to the Germanic tribes that Hasidus documents and writes down. So, yeah, that would be my answer to that. I wish I got more um, pointed in the direction of, of, of other source material besides just the lore. What's up, John Rechi? Rechi, sorry. Um, Halen, welcome to you. This is, again, a live stream that will be published in audio format on the uh, Spotify and all the other audio platforms for the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast this week. It will remain here on YouTube uh, and it'll go up on Patreon too, guys. So, so don't worry about that. Um, what's up, Patrick Walsh, my brother from another mother out there in misery, Missouri. Um, good to see you here, man. Um, all right, Jason. So uh, I would like to get some Norse tattoos. However, what's your opinion on that regarding what your uh, what you'd recommend and where it would be. So, uh, I mean, go for it, I guess, you know, like, um, be careful with runes though. I, I guess would be my only, 
uh, cautionary comment when it comes to that there, Jason, because a lot of folks like to uh, get runes tattooed on them. And what they'll do is they'll take Elder Futhark runes, try to spell out a modern English word, and then like one of the one of the most popular ones I think is is this image of like a either the either a Vagvisir or an Aegis Yalmer, one of the Icelandics. That's kind of like what you see behind me. You know, they'll uh, they'll put that and then they'll spell in Elder Futhark runes, right? Not all who wander are lost. That's a very popular thing, um, and it's a nod to 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 Tolkien. Uh, you know the, the J.R.R. Tolkien, the author of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, um, because there's a there's a line in in the book uh, or in one of the books uh, re referring to Aragorn being the heir of the throne of Gondor and talking about you know not all that uh, all that is glow all that is gold does not glitter uh, and and I don't remember all the rest but you know not all who wander are lost. And they'll put it in Elder Fulark runes, um, but it doesn't translate properly. Modern English does not translate correctly with, with Elder Fulark runes. Elder Fulark runes were um, traditionally used to write in Proto-Germanic languages, the, the, the language that predates even Old Norse, right? So if you're looking to get Norse tattoos and you're looking at any sort of runic inscriptions or runic writing, I would definitely... Um, pause with that because it um, you know unless you have a good source of knowledge uh somebody who is either a runologist or knows the difference between when the elder futhark runes were used when the younger futhark runes were used or any other of the germanic runic letters right whether they're anglo-saxon runes uh on and on and on you're wanting to definitely make sure that if you're going to use the runes that you're using them correctly especially when you're writing anything out spelling anything out you don't you don't you don't technically use elder Futhark runes or even younger Futhark runes to write in modern English. You would use Old Norse uh, if you're going to be writing something in Old Norse or even Old Icelandic. You you would use the younger Futhark runes because that is the runic alphabet that was used to write in those spoken languages. Anything older than that, like the Proto-Germanic languages, um, you would typically use your uh, elder Futhark runes. All right. Uh, Hello, Patrick. Hello, John. Hello, hello, hello. Hail and hello, everyone. What's up? Misty Disler. This is uh, Richard's wife. Richard's uh, wife. And congratulations on your newborn child, uh, Misty and, and, and Richard, if you guys are watching still. Congratulations and thank you for being here. Uh, guys, please do be sure if you're not, uh, if you don't mind, please, please share the video. Uh, because as I said earlier and kind of going to repeat throughout the broadcast here, we are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Um, and this is going to be the content for the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast this week uh, due to just a conflict of scheduling or something. I don't know what happened early, but my normal the, the guest that I was supposed to have this week um, I just didn't show up. And so hopefully everything's OK and we get them on at a later time, maybe in April, because I'm again, I'm booked out all the way through April. But we're answering questions live here in the comments. Um, so... Please share the video around. Let's get some get some good dialogue. Lots of good questions going on here. Uh, James Rob uh, James Robinson, yeah, runes terrify me because I don't want to 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 use the wrong thing, and I don't totally understand them yet. Um, I think you're in a good space to feel that way, especially being as you put it, a baby heathen. Don't feel like you have to rush into runes early on. Um, I think you have a, a healthy respect, okay? Terrifying you, uh, is, <laughs> that's a strong term. But hey, if that's how you feel, then that's how you feel. Uh, being cautious of using runes is, is good for you early on. Um, if they call to you, if, they, if it's, you know, there's something that you feel drawn to that you want to explore. Um, you know, Scott Shell was here earlier in the, in the comments. Uh, he's definitely somebody if you want to, He's got a YouTube channel. Um, uh, Scott, if you're watching, I don't remember the name off the top of my head. But anyway, he's on YouTube. He's also got uh, a daily Havamal page. So he's a good source to go to when it comes to learning uh, more about 
the runes in, in, in their application, right, where they've appeared in, in certain rune stones and, and how to pronounce them and, and so on and so forth. Um, you can always hit me up. You can email me, MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. Follow me on my socials, you know, the Midgard Musings page, the YouTube channel. Um, you can always shoot me a message there if you have any questions about things. I'll, I'll do my best to, to get you the best answer I possibly can. Um, but yeah, good on you for being cautious about it. Uh, Sagas of the Icelanders is a good book, uh, says Voodoo Viking. Uh, the complete set is even better. However, it's like $400. There's a lot of sagas, guys. There's like, what, 700 some odd different sagas. Um, the, just the Scandinavian ones, right? Um, lots of normal, everyday livelihood and, and ritual in them. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Amelia says, uh, from the River Pine Kindred, says that uh, there is several good books on Futhark about spelling words correctly. It is also good to get um, opinions from someone who is an expert on the Futhark. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I kind of echoing that comment earlier when I said, you know, it, it's good to be cautionary and, and you know, if they terrify you or if you're, you know, I said don't, let it, don't necessarily let it deter you or keep you from pursuing an interest in wanting to learn, um, but definitely if you're new and early on, uh, kind of like you say, a baby heathen, um, it's best to consult with people who know uh, what they're talking about with that. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Rich is here watching too. All right, cool. M Misty, Misty Disler uh, and, and, and Richard Disler um, up there in Kentucky. My northern neighbors of I'm down here in Tennessee, but I'm, I'm I'm definitely not a southerner. But you're north of me, so you're the northerner right now, uh, respectively speaking. <laughs> so nice to see you guys here in the in the comments. Uh, Patrick Walsh says, "So my question, brother, is um, have you done any cold plunges since the last day that we did it? I have not been down back in the river." Um, so for those of you watching or listening, don't know what we're talking about. Um, myself, Patrick, and some other close friends and, and, and kinsmen of ours, uh, we were all charged with a, a challenge nine days leading up to, to Yule, the historical heathen Yule, to, to do a, a cold plunge every day for nine days um, for as long as you could stand it, but you know, trying to get up to about three minutes. It, it could be you know a cold shower, an ice bath. We ended up getting sub-zero temperatures freezing temperatures and like six to seven inches of snow here in my part of the country as well as other parts of the country where other of our brethren were and are um so there was snow on the ground we did you know se several of us did snow baths um i have not done another one uh since then brother because mainly again the last day ended on the first night of yule and then everything leading after that uh, I had to prepare our space, our grounds, our home for our Yola Bloat, right? We had guests over and everything like that. So today is Monday, and I went back, uh, you know, walked out here to to see what the river looks like. And with all this rain and the snow melt and everything that we got, it is, a, it is a raging river down there, the Stones River here. So I haven't gone back down to the river since then, um, and I haven't done another cold shower. But I, I have considered... Um, continuing on in that endeavor and making cold plunges or cold showers or cold water exposure, kind of a regular part of my health and well-being uh, repertoire. All right, Michael Thacker's next in the queue. Uh, which songs would you recommend? Saga, sorry, which which sagas would you would you recommend to read first uh, to develop worldviews and sense of ritual preparation? Hmm. First one that comes to mind is the saga of Egil Skallagrimson. Um, that's a good one because it talks about you know the the use of runes in magical senses, and 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 Egil was a he was a runer. I mean, he was a he was a, a rune master. Erilas, he you know Vitki, whatever you want to call him, he was known for his efficiency, proficiency with the runes. Um, 
but outside of that, like if you want to look at like uh, sources for you know good information on like um, worldview type stuff, culture of the Teutons uh, by Wilhelm Gronbeck is a good good source. Both volumes one and two. Um, I have a, a a reading list which after this broadcast I will put in the comments section. And for those that are going to be listening to this podcast after the fact. I will um, share some like recommended readings that goes into cultural type stuff, right? Worldviews, um, how the Germanic people in, in the Norse would have viewed things like death, the afterlife, um, their 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 concepts of what is holy, um, other things along those along those lines. I will come back to this, um, Michael, with uh, with a kind of a a list, a recommended reading list that I uh, would, would, would share with people. Um, but to start with, yeah, Egil Scala Grimson, uh, the saga of Egil Scala Grimson is a good one. Hello, yep, the Voodoo Viking is welcoming Patrick there. Um, get, getting caught up on some more comments here, so forgive me, guys. But Scott Shell says, yes, runes are way more nuanced and complicated than they appear. Also, divination should be the last thing you do with the runes you need to know them and create relationships with them first 100 percent agree you need to know, you know it, it's even it's even recited in the hovamon right uh do you know how to carve do you know how to paint do you know how to bless do you know how to send do you know how to do all these things uh with the runes do you know how to do this with them do you know how to do that do that with them um there is also in the saga of Egil scala grimson uh, there is a uh, kind of a famous famous line, and if I can find it, maybe I think I may have seen it appear recently. So as you guys are bearing with me, I'm gonna filibuster a little bit and try to find the thing that I was saying. People are probably gonna beat me to it in the comments. Uh, oh man, let's see here. Um, but it's basically how do I find this now. This is all right. Quick, quick thinks, Jesse. Quick thinks. Um, but it's basically, uh, you know, the, the, the stanza says is, you know, you, you, you should not paint runes <laughs> unless you you know what you're doing um, I'm gonna come up with it I know this is a bad filibuster right now uh, probably not gonna find it anytime soon hmm Yeah, probably not going to find it. Uh, well, you know what? Let's see what we can do here. Uh... Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is the one. Hold on a second, y'all. Hold on to your horses. Hold on to your lug nuts. Uh. Yeah, so in, in Egil's saga, you know, he's he meets a farmer who has a daughter. She gets sick. Uh, come to find out that there's been runes painted on a whalebone that were painted wrong. So the runes were, were used incorrectly. Um, and Egil has to fix it. All right. So one of the things that he says is... And I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a student of Old Norse. I've, I've listened. I've, I've, I've done my best to try to say it 
the best way possible, but uh, it says, or he says, Scolat mother, runa rista, nema roda velcuni, tot vedir moga mani, esof mirkvan stav vilisk, which is to say that you, let me get the English translation here, if I can find it. You ought not to carve runes unless you do them well. Uh, it happens to many carvers that they make an error. All right. So now that I did all of that in the last few minutes, um, <clears throat> wish I had that on the cuff, ready to go, just fired off on the hip. Um, so, so, so there you go. Um, let me get caught up on some of the comments here. Uh, this is great, says J uh, Jason. Shared the live. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, not everyone can or even should be a rune master. It's not for everyone, says Scott. Scott, of all people, know. And yeah, I 100% I, I echo the sentiment, Scott. Uh, Kentucky women are hot, voodoo viking. All right, well, you heard it here first. Probably not last. Uh, Patrick says, thank you for answering I'm thinking of uh, reintroducing myself from time to time. It's so good uh, talking about cold plunges. Uh, live streaming, guys, random ramblings, random heathen ramblings. I mean, we are we are uh, capturing the epitome of, of random ramblings for sure. Uh, you couldn't pay me to do a cold plunge. I bet you, John, you're in Florida too, right? Um, you, you got that southern Florida blood pumping through your veins, so it, it would be a shock for sure. <laughs> But let me tell you what, here's the interesting thing about it, um, and you're in Voodoo Viking Louisiana land there, you, you agree. Um, hello there, Sh Sh Shanda. Shanda, uh, a reading list. I will do my best again to go, well, I won't do my best, I will. Uh, after the live stream is done, and, and for those that are listening afterwards, because again, this live is going to be rendered into audio format for Spotify, and everybody gets a chance to listen. I will be providing a, uh, my suggested reading list. Okay, don't don't just stop with what I do. Definitely explore more, but I'll be coming back to that. Um, but for all you really deep Southerners, uh, Florida, Louisiana stuff, folks in the Gulf area, um, I'm I'm from New York. Okay, maybe it's my northern blood, um, but I tell you, getting into cold water is a shock. I was like breathing heavy, uh, you know, just having a hard time with it the first day. By the time the, the you know third, fourth, fifth day and beyond came around, I was like just chilling in that water and finding my little happy place and just enjoying it. Like, yes, it's cold. Yes, it's a shock. But after the first few seconds, um, you'd be amazed at how resilient we are as people. Um, and and with the right train, you know, training with the right uh, going on, you know, re repetitiveness of it, it's definitely beneficial. Uh, Patrick says, I'll be getting ready for bed soon, but uh, wanted to make sure I stopped by. Brother, hope the podcast gave great and everyone uh, goes great and hope everyone has a great night and stays frosty. Absolutely, brother. You too. Thank you so much. Uh, Voodoo Viking says, stay frosty, Patrick. Uh, Hrothgar Skup, responding to Michael Thacker. Um, Ayaboga Saga has some stuff on ritual um so does hawking the good saga yeah the saga of hawking the good uh good one there too um beowulf is a good one thank you for 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 mentioning beowulf there's a lot of uh important parts of things like sumble that are laid out in beowulf um so if you're looking to kind of model your approach to sumble beowulf is a great Great saga to, to go off of. Um, Scott says, going to jump over to the Daily Havamal account. Share the stream. Hopefully that'll get you some more views. Yes, guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Scott, as I get caught up on comments. Uh, Scott does have the Daily Havamal page, uh, which I will be linking in the after stream uh, description and podcast show notes for those of you that are listening to this when it airs on the audio waves on, on Thursday. Scott has a Facebook page called the Daily Havamal. I know if you go onto Facebook and you search for the Daily Havamal, you'll uh, you'll probably find a bunch. Um, but this is his one right here. 
Um, and I'll be sure to link all that in the description and the show notes for those of you listening and, and, and stuff to know which one it is that we're talking about. All right. Great, great dialogue. Thank you all so much uh, as we continue on here. Um, no, Jason's got to go now, uh, but thanks for having me on and, and definitely be uh, listening to this for, for the info, especially the reading list. Yes, definitely check back uh, in the description after the stream is over. I will be sharing a recommended reading list in the description area. Um, so again, when, when this goes up on the audio waves, for those of you that are listening, uh, just check the show notes for all that. The heathen nerd is firing back, coming back here. It says, with so many heathens uh, turning to social media to find community, do you think you can build Frith uh, online? Or do you think Frith is made uh, into Frith in person? No, I do not think that Frith can be made online. And yes, I think that Frith... Uh, I believe that Frith has to, can only, can only happen in person. All right. This is a big thing that I've talked about in the past um, when it comes to the, the false sense of community that, that social media uh, uh, gives. Um, we are so separated from real connections with people, real human connections because of social media it's a double-edged sword it has its it has its benefits it has its uses um obviously you know doing stuff like this um reaching people talking getting dialogue that sort of stuff um, because of social media i've been able to you know have uh have the podcast become what it is and then have guests on and stuff like that. so again there's benefits and there's good uses for it um that there is absolutely no way that frith can be established just online um i've known patrick walsh who was here earlier uh for many many years and i ref i i would not and i and i talked to him about this you know uh i would not exchange the title of brother with him until we had gotten the chance to share moments together and and determine what our obligations to one another was which is a part of what frith involves uh Frith has to happen in person. There's things that have to exist and happen in person that establishes the boundaries of Frith and the obligations of Frith and all that. Uh, Wilhelm Gronbeck. Uh, Wilhelm Gronbeck is a great, uh, he has a lot of great uh, insights on that in his book, Culture of the Teutons, if you're interested. Um, so while online communities, social media forums whether it's facebook youtube twitter instagram google plus your sister's ass the pony express discord i don't care while all of those things can be great for building a you know connection with people frith is not something that can exist online it has to happen in person um okay amelia's got a big long comment here i'm not sure uh so there's there's some no, there's some numbers notated but it says you will find runes runic letters to read very good runes very powerful runes which odin painted and oh is this stanza 142 of the Havamal? yeah you will find runes runic letters to read very great runes very powerful runes which odin painted and which the holy gods made and which odin carved and then stanza 143, Odin carved for the gods and Dane for the elves, uh, Dvalin for the dwarves, and Osvith for the giants. I carved some myself. Stanza 144, do you know how to write them? Do you know how to read them? Do you know... Uh, do you know how to... Do you know how to read them? Do you know how to paint them? Do you know how to test them do you know how to ask them do you know how to bless them so on and so forth um there's various things that you should know how to do with the runes and those are the stanzas so this starts with 142 143 144 of the Havamal. uh there's various and numerous translations i know some people have preferences of whether they like the bray translation the uh, uh the the hollander translation 
uh, Thornton translation, Jackson Crawford has a translation, right? There's so many different translations out there of the Havamal, but thank you, Amelia, for sharing that. Uh, definitely check that out for, for more information on that. It is the Havamal stanzas 142, 43, 44 uh, in that area. No, Frith is not online. In person, me too, Jesse, says uh, Hrothgarskop. Thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. Um, I think I, I, I it, it's, it's a pretty definitive line that I draw there. Um, you can't have Frith online. It's just not possible. Um, online is ideal for outreach. It does not replace actual human interaction or activity, and you need to establish community. 100% Voodoo Viking. Funny enough, Amelia, who uh, just shared the, the stanzas from the Havamal, uh, again, she's the Gothi or the uh, uh, River Pine Kindred in Texarkana, Texas. She has a Facebook group called Arklatex, uh, the Arklatex Heathen Community, I think it is. Um, but she was just my guest on the podcast last week. We talked about heathen community and outreach and things like that and how social media, you know, she's over the years been able to leverage and and, and put people in contact with others to find people in their area to connect with at the grassroots level. So, again, it has its benefits. It has its uses and it's good for those things. It does not replace, like you said, um, what actual connection with people can do right uh michael's ask says what kind of uh what kind of preparation should one make before going to a pagan meetup uh, i mean i guess depending on the nature of the meetup some 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 meetups are like potluck style gatherings you know so what will end up happening is there'll be like a you know, an event made on, on online or something or, or, or people on like an email list will get a notice like, hey, you know, we're gathering together on this day at this time. Please bring a dish, you know. So in terms of preparing <laughs> for a heathen meetup or a pagan meetup, if it's a potluck thing, obviously you would want to prepare a dish, right? Some some sort of contribution to the to the menu. Um. I mean, aside from that, I think, you know, all of the pagan meetups that I go to around here in Tennessee, uh, it's just a bunch of people hanging out, talking. Like, it's not – sometimes there's topics of conversation. Sometimes there's topics or areas of focus. Sometimes there's, you know, very specific things that we want to, like, use as a theme for the, for the, for the meetup. But, I mean, if, you're, if, you, if you have a vision and you want to have – people gather together for something for something very specific then go into it prepared to deliver and provide those specific things right if you want to have a meetup to you know hear people's opinions on a certain series of stanzas from the Havamal or you know I don't know just whatever right certain stories from the lore then come to that thing prepared to contribute in that way Otherwise, it could just be like, hey, guys, we're hanging out, we're talking, you know, let's grab a coffee, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. It, it can be pretty casual in that sense, right? Uh, the Heathen Nerd is saying uh, you may get some, uh, what does it say? You might get some, sorry, guys. Oh, you might get some mileage out of this one. Snorri versus Saxo. <laughs> uh, apples and oranges? I think because Saxo Grammaticus is, uh, you know, his 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 whole thing was was very different than than Snorri's. Um, so you know, uh, the gods, uh, the names of the gods, I guess, with with Saxo Grammaticus and his history of the Danes and whatnot is 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 focused more on uh, deifying people, right? So like the names of Odin, Freyr, Balder like all the various uh, names of the gods that we read about in like Snorri's Eddas. Um, these are these are figures in, in Saxo Grammaticus's uh, source material. You know, they, they are royalty. They are people. They are heroes. They are... They're different. 
Uh, so to measure them up or to try to pin them against each other, like verse one versus the other. Um. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really have a an immediate answer for that. That's a good one though. Um, cool on their Facebook page, Voodoo Viking on the Arklatex group. I'm assuming. Um, <laughs> that's an evil question. <laughs> Snorri versus Saxo. Yeah, that's a fun one. Hello there, Norm. Uh, I feel uh, feel energized after a cold plunge. I do too. Um, I, I, you know, I've gotten told, you know, I'm, I'm nuts. I'm crazy. What is wrong with you? Uh, the uh, the cold plunge thing. You know, cold water treatment. It does. It it revitalizes you. It energizes you. It's like one of the best things for your body to like put you back into like a uh, a position of focus right um prothgar is a field that saxo is the danish version of england the saga yeah oh god we got the northwoods kindred tuning in here uh hello i thought i would come in and show support the heathen nerd told me that you were doing a live event well hail to you northwoods kindred no bodvar uh, i believe the good chieftain slash goli of your kindred up there not sure who's running the channel but it is nice to see you here on the live stream you're featured um here because we're doing a live uh, in lieu of this week's well not in lieu of we're actually going to turn this live stream into the podcast this week my my scheduled guest was uh was absent um we were supposed to have a guest on this week that we were going to be recording tonight couldn't get him to come on and so i thought well what, what how can i best utilize my time uh because i can't just reschedule for a later time or or whatever i'm booked out all the way through april um so if you're if you're coming here and you're and you're commenting um then it is going to be featured on this week's random heathen ramblings podcast all right it's bodvar sweet uh bodvar uh just while we're here and for the listeners and viewers that do get a chance to watch or listen to this later on in the week um, I know we've been in contact over email in the years past. I'd like to reconnect um, and schedule something for you to come on the show here and do an actual recording, not a live stream, but 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 get something uh, planned maybe in April or, or beyond. Um, I'm booked out through April now or into the middle of April and would love to have uh, you come on and record an episode on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Uh, so we'll be in touch. I think I still have your email. Um, but yeah, thank you for, for, for tuning into the live stream and, and coming and saying hi. We're going to be wrapping it up here soon so I can get a chance to get into the post-editing studio for all of you listeners and viewers out there. Uh, Amelia from the River Pine Kindred says, normally uh, meetups will be posted on social media. The host will post it there uh, or post it there. Uh, will be a potluck, drum circle, lecture, and rules, etc. Normally, you have to be mindful of the groups um, having the event or hosting the event. Sorry, some some meetups are laid back where others are uh, uncomfortable because of host rules and the location. Yeah, there's 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 you know there's all kinds of variables and stuff to to consider. Um, if you're the host, you kind of have a little bit of a control over things. Um, if not, then just maybe ask some questions, you know, if it's an online event, uh, post your question into the, uh, to the online event link and, and, and the host hopefully will be vigilant enough to, to respond. Um, Booty Viking says, instead of comparing apples to oranges, I always viewed it as, uh, which variety of apple do you prefer? Yeah. Cause you know, not everybody likes the, you know granny smiths you know and people like them other ones but all right um i think this is great i think we've got a great uh we got a great video to to, to release later on in the week and, and, and great information to put out here on our audio platform spotify apple podcast google podcast pandora i think iheart radio there's like a bunch of others like nearly a dozen different platforms if you're into podcast listening versus watching you can definitely find me on spotify and nearly a dozen other platforms uh so that will be airing on thursday this week hello kyle uh thanks for the 
inspiration to start the cold plunge challenge i will be starting mine very soon and look forward to the results well i'm glad that we could be uh inspiring for you and hopefully others to think about it definitely has benefits it's good um if you have you know prior health conditions i know one of the one of the guys uh in our in our tribe our, our gothi as a matter of fact you know um he, you know he's diabetic so you know his feet limbs um toes things like that you have to be careful with he's also uh has a propensity um towards uh, seizures he's on medication for that so when you put your body into a shock like cold icy water um if you have any pre-existing medical conditions do your due diligence speak with your medical professional please do not take what i say or what anybody else says online as the end all be all authority of doing something just realize that there are benefits to it consult with your medical professional before making a decision should you decide that you want to go in that direction um be cautious take you know do your research make sure that if you have something that could you know cause conflict or uh or, or anything that you're being mindful of that so um that's going to wrap up the live stream it's going to wrap up this week's episode of the random heathen ramblings podcast which so we're, we're kind of doing a two birds with one stone sort of thing here today uh but for all of my listeners that are going to be catching this on uh, spotify or anywhere else um the live stream was random we we had to kind of shoot from the hip and, and make something happen off on, on off the cuff um but if you do want to regularly see video content um you'll have to become a patron on patreon okay uh it is only a dollar a month to do that so one dollar you don't have to do it every month if you want to pay a dollar you know go on a binge marathon of watching all of the videos that are up here on this platform right now you can definitely do that and then cancel uh or or, or stop your pledge every month but if you do want to continue to watch video podcasts uh normally they are only going to be released on on patreon so one dollar gets you that access um the link's going to be in the description or in the show notes um, but for right now if you're listening to this this was a live impromptu stream on youtube and facebook had a bunch of great dialogue had a bunch of great conversations appearing in the comments here um so hopefully you enjoyed it you can find this on facebook and youtube um, and you can always watch it again there um, but for going forward usually what we're going to be doing is keeping the video versions of the podcast in video format only on patreon so if that's something that interests you uh head down to the link tree link that's in the description or show notes and sign up to become a patron on patreon today thank you so much to everybody that's listened watched and commented on this live stream being a part of the random heathen ramblings podcast this week apologies for not being able to get our guest on that was scheduled but hopefully we can reschedule them uh, for a future date uh looking out into uh, april or beyond or beyond and do have other guests lined up everything is booked out into the month of april um, so hopefully we'll have some more great guests coming on here and thank you all so much for being here to show your support today uh, and ongoing if you did like this podcast be sure to upvote it you know give it the like give it a share give it a heart react to you know whatever the thing that the platform that you're watching this on gives you the chance to do um, if you're listening to this when it comes out then upvote it do all those things I uh, greatly appreciate your ongoing and constant support thank you also very much for being here till we see each other again in the next episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. May the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.